what color is this dress? <laughs> this picture, which you remember, and that question nearly broke the internet in 2015 after a Tumblr user posted them both. Within hours, literally millions of people were debating the question, is this dress white and gold or is it black and blue? Across social media, everyone was talking about this dress, from US senators to Kim Kardashian West. And the debate wasn't just happening online, on Twitter and on Tumblr. It moved through local news, national news, and even academic research. So from Kim and Kanye to brain and cognitive science. <laughs> this dress was a cultural phenomenon. And like many viral things, it seemed completely random, right? But was it actually random? What is it about our brains that lead us to share memes like this online? Memes, as we tend to think of them, are funny images or videos with the most popular dominating our social media feeds. But memes go deeper than this. Memes are scientific units of cultural information, and they are using us. Memes are using our brains and the internet to spread themselves as widely as possible online. And sometimes there are ideas attached to those. So science and our modern internet usage are colliding in a way that is really directly impacting humanity. So let's explore these topics. First, science, especially mimetic science, can help us understand the historical concept of memes. Second, Science can also inform the way we share memes online today. And third, while we are usually not thinking about how sharing memes might impact humanity, we definitely should be. Our humanity might even depend on it. So who's ever had a song stuck in their head? Everybody, including myself. So this happens hands down every time I hear we Will Rock You by Queen. <laughs> this song can play on a loop in my head for hours or days after I hear it. And I promised my children I wouldn't sing on stage, but at home I have no shame at all. <laughs> and so I will hum this song around the house, my husband starts doing the same thing, then everybody's annoyed, right? <laughs> and so this is a perfect example of the science of mimetics. Mimetics is the study of what makes ideas and information spread. It was first proposed in 1976 by Richard Dawkins, who borrowed from biological evolution to explain how cultural information evolves and is transferred. And under this theory, these memes are moving back and forth between humans in some way that we can't see. Dawkins proposed that just like hereditary information, like my brown hair or your blue eyes, is transferred from living thing to living thing by genes, cultural information is also transferred in some way using some other mechanism. He called this mechanism a meme, which he took from the Greek word my meme, which means imitated thing. And under this original theory, only the strongest memes survive. So they are fighting in our brains, constantly competing for space and advantages. And the most powerful memes, the most successful memes, are the ones that are imitated the most widely. So Queen was on to something with We Will Rock You because that song is literally everywhere. It's at nearly every sporting event. It's in television. It was on the Big Bang Theory a few years ago. It was even used to open the Oscars a couple of months ago. Under the original theory of mimetics, memes could include things like songs, ideas, catchphrases, and behaviors. And under this original theory, memes were moving back and forth in a way that we can't detect. And also, these memes were doing things in ways that we couldn't really see. And a meme's host could share that meme with multiple people at the same time. 
So if I start humming, we will rock you right now, as several of you follow suit, everybody in the room now is a meme host. Today, though, the term meme really has been co-opted to mean a piece of media that is copied and shared quickly online. Most of you have probably seen them. Today's memes are an outgrowth of that original from 1976. And today's memes are thriving on the internet. Funny cat memes <laughs> are what got us all started. I love Grumpy Cat, but Grumpy Cat is really just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to this notion of memes. Memes today have really become easy ways for us to communicate with each other. Some people, mostly born in the 2000s, can have entire conversations using only memes. And the rest of us, as we are spending more of our time online, we are being influenced by these memes. Memes are making us do things, y'all. Memes are making us do ridiculous things, like dump buckets of ice water on our heads. More than 17 million people did this as part of the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge, which was a wildly successful meme. And it was wildly successful not just because it was imitated widely, but it also raised more than $100 million in less than two months for the ALS Association which raises awareness about Lou Gehrig's disease. And thanks in part to these donations that were raised as part of a meme, scientists even discovered a new gene that causes ALS, which could possibly even lead to a cure. But memes can also be used in ways that are harmful to us. Take a look at this picture. Pretty harmless, right? This image is central to something called the Blue Whale Challenge which is critical to um, in encouraging teens and preteens to commit suicide after 50 days of increasingly violent tasks. The meme's creators started this meme because they wanted to cleanse the earth of human biological waste. And authorities think there have been 130 at least cases of confirmed suicide in teens as part of this challenge. So memes can also support hidden motives. Another example, the whip and nay nay, which I will not do on stage, but <laughs> the whip and nay nay, one of the most wildly successful challenges in YouTube's history and one of the most widely viewed YouTube videos in history. It wasn't just a kid who got lucky with a cute dance. That meme challenge was carefully orchestrated with a corporate machine co-founded by Madonna, that manufactures viral dances. And it gets darker. In 2017, at a particularly tense moment in American history, Faden Santana filmed Walter Scott being shot and killed by a police officer in South Carolina. That video went viral, and after it did, Faden Santana hired a firm that began demanding $10,000 from newspapers and other media outlets using the video. So while monetizing viral videos was and still is common, monetizing death like this was unheard of. The science does not care about us, and it does not care about whether any of this is good or bad for humanity. The science is decidedly neutral. We, on the other hand, are not neutral at all. We care about preventing uh, suicide in teens. We really want to solve diseases and cure diseases. And we really like the whip and nene. <laughs> so what we can do is use the science to inform and impact our social media sharing habits. And our sharing habits are so critically important because memes can transcend so many different boundaries. These two memes are the most popular memes on Twitter. You do not have to have any particular background based on the laughs in the room to get the message in these memes and click share, right? But these memes are not just funny memes. They become ways that we share ideas across geographical boundaries, social boundaries, and ethnic boundaries. So what we have to do is have some level of self-awareness to recognize when we are being scoped out to be the next human host of a meme. Because memes are desperate to be shared online. And while memes may be driving humanity, 
we get to decide whether we want to be the vehicle for means to do so. Thank you.